Good day and welcome to this video. We are going to be using Mac 2011 version of Excel today and what we'll be doing is creating a graph that has three form controls on it. So I'll show you the finished product. Here it is here. It's a basic graph but you can either take away or show a target value using a checkbox. You can change the input from um, column C, which is result A, to column D, which is result B. And you can also show more or less data on the graph using the spin button. So to start that off, what I'm going to do using this little data set that I've created is just insert a chart. There we go. One little feature you'll know about Excel can be a little bit annoying. I certainly find it annoying is that if you try and graph data like this, it assumes that all the days in between Mondays are missing. So it makes the lines really thin. So if you right click on Format Axis, you can choose to have it be a text scale rather than a date scale. And that makes it just look uh, a bit more normal. So anyhow, Let's get into it. The first thing we want to do, so just move this to the side a little bit, is the option button to determine whether result A or result B gets graphed. So I'm simply going to um, put a little heading there. And on the basis of a radio button, I'm going to determine which one goes there. So just firstly, if you haven't got this developer tab in your ribbon, then you need to click on Excel, Preferences, Ribbon, and then drag this down and check the box next to developer. You can see mine's already checked. Assuming you've got that, you're ready to go. Click on Radio button. You'll then get a little cross here on your mouse. I want you to just click and drag a little rectangle and do that twice. So you've got option button one and option button two. If you right click edit text, result A for the first one and result B for the second one. So by default, Excel knows that these two buttons belong together. So without having to do anything, if you click one and then the other, it shows you that you can only have one selected at a time. So if you had a page with a whole lot of these buttons on there, you would have to tell Excel that this particular pair are a group and that another set are a different group. The next thing you have to do is right click on either of the two and click Format Control. You don't have to do much with a radio button, but what you do have to do is tell it a cell link. So I'm just going to choose that cell there and say OK. And what it does is that cell changes to one or two depending on which option we've selected. Now I need to write an IF equation. So if that cell equals 1, then we want result A, otherwise we want result B. If you're not familiar with if equations, I'd suggest you take some time to learn them because they can be very helpful. And so now what should happen is that I can go result A, result B, And it changes. So I could already do a little bit of magic to this graph simply by oops, dragging across these little highlighted sections. So if I 
yes, I can already get some interaction with my chart. But that's only part of what I want to do. What I want to be able to do is um, also change the size of the data that is being graphed using a spin bit. And that takes a little bit more work. So I'm going to first put the spin button in there. As you can see there, it's called spin button. Make it nice and big. There's a little bit more to do with this button. So if I right click format control, um, the compulsory thing that I have to do is do a cell link. So I'll do that first. Doesn't matter where you choose, but make sure you have a cell link. There are 16 weeks of data, so I'm going to have the minimum value be 1 and the maximum be 16, and that the incremental change is 1. Yep, so that's pretty good. And now what happens if I press up and down, that changes. And so what we need to do is use that value that's in cell H6 to determine how big our range is. And to make that all work, we need to do a dynamic named range. And that can be a little bit scary. Um, there are five variables that you have to program into the fun function. And that function goes inside the name range dialog box. So let's give this a go. Insert, name, define. Here we get a dialog box. These are the ones that I've got on my finished chart that you saw at the beginning. So I'm going to create some new ones. Dynamic data. And down here in the refers to box, I need to write a function. Offset. From this point here, which is an anchor point. I usually use the title of the data as my anchor point. The data itself starts one row down and zero columns across from where the anchor point was. And the last two variables are pretty important, particularly this next one. And that is, I need to click on this cell here. And this cell, if you remember, is the value that changes when we play with the spinner button. So that tells us the number of rows of data that we want to see on the graph. The last value, 1, just indicates that there's one column of data. So that's a good start. We have to do that once more. Insert, name, define. And I'm going to call that dynamic axis. because we want to also have the dates that form the x-axis be dynamic too. So it starts there, goes down one row, zero columns. There are that many rows of data by one column. Okay, so we've done that bit. We can now see if we can get it to link up with this chart. So if I right click on the series inside the chart, what you can see up in the formula bar here is a whole bunch of stuff. There are actually four um, separate parts to this thing. The first one is the title, the second one is the axis labels, the third one is the data, and the fourth one is the number of the series on the graph, in this case one. So I sometimes edit it inside that formula window, but I prefer to do it inside the select data wizard because it's a little bit more intuitive and so what we've got here what's the name of our data we can keep that what are the y values this is our actual data so I'm going to type the name of the range that I just created And in the axis labels, I'm going to type the name of the second range that we created. You'll note that I left the sheet reference in there. So that's start followed by an exclamation mark, because that's the name of my sheet. Now if I click OK, what we can see is it's already working, because we've got this uh, range selected on the chart, 
and the place that it's referencing to is highlighted. So if I click up here, we can see it growing as we hit the spinner button. Great, so that's working as well. So the first thing we had to do was create the, create the dynamic name ranges, and the second thing that we had to do was link it to the chart. The last thing that I want to try and get out is a checkbox. Works the same as a radio button. I'm going to write show target. Make sure I spell that correctly. And what I want this to do is pull up an extra series of data if I check the box. So, just like we've done the first two times, what I want to do is format the control. Sorry, I chose the wrong option there for a second. Pick a cell link. Uh, it can be anywhere, really. And what the cell link will do is show true or false, depending on whether we have selected the item or not. As you can see there, true or false. Now what I want to do is write another if equation that brings up a target whether we've checked the box. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. I also want to choose an appropriate target depending on whether um, we choose result A or result B. So I'm going to put um, 120 as a target on this one and 16 as a target on that one. So this cell here needs to say the following. It needs to be an if equation that has another if inside it. So if that cell equals true, then we want to do something. If it's not true, it just exits the formula straight away and doesn't keep going any further. It's always good practice to put the dollar signs in as you go. So what we want is if they've selected result A, then we want to choose that. Otherwise, we want to choose that one. So we can close that if off. And the last thing is relatively important. You need to put an NA and an open and a close bracket. And now what's important about that NA is that NAs do not graph. So that if we put them on a chart, I'll just drag that down, they will not chart. So what I want to try first, just see as if the data is working. So the target is changing. Great. And let's see if it's turning off and on. Yes, it is. So one more thing to do before we can add it to the graph, and that is insert name define. We need to create another dynamic range. Dynamic target. Just like before, we need to point it to the cell where our spinner button is based. I just want to add that series now to the chart. The name can be target. What I've found is that Typing it all in with the exclamation mark. It's a good way to make sure it all happens as it should. And if we click on the series, what we should see is that the target comes up. What I prefer to do 
So if I right click on the series and change the series type to a line, then it looks a lot better on the graph. So what we've got here A dynamic chart, three different types of form control on there. Radio button, spinner button, and checkbox. What you'd normally do is hide a lot of this working so they don't see it, but um, good to play around with some of these forms, see if you can get them to use. Typically you'd only use one on a graph to avoid making it too overcomplicated, but uh, it's nice to have these options available. Thanks for coming past. If you want a copy of this file, then please drop me a line. See you next time.